welcome back to my channel today's video i decided to do a how i study my bible video and i do actually already have a comprehensive video on how i study my bible and like my quiet time routine note taking method all of that on my channel already but i wanted to make this one more vlog style so just taking you with me as i do my bible reading this morning and kind of walking you through what that routine looks like and so that's what we're going to be doing i'm going to walk you through what i use what plan i go through and sort of how i do it and then i'll also share anything that i took away from this bible reading at the end of the video so let's just get into it so the first thing I'll do is I'll get out my Bible study tools almost every day. That includes my Bible, obviously, and then my scribe Bible journal. If you've watched my videos, you've seen this thing a lot. Um, but this is basically like a Bible study journal. So let me show you what it looks like. So it's got a space for scripture and then to write out observations, interpretation, application, and then a prayer, a memory verse, and gratitude. And so the first thing I'll do is I'll grab out my app that I use, my plan on. And what I use is the Grace to You app, and then I use their daily Bible plan here. And so here's the passages it has me reading today, and I'm just going to write down those references right up here in the top of my journal. Okay, so I just copied those references on over so that it's kind of a quick reference for what I'll be reading through today. And then the next thing I do is I look through to see which of those passages has commentary here in the app. And so I know the Ezekiel passage has it, the James passage has it, and then it looks like it's more for the James passage down here. And so I'm just going to write a little dot next to the Ezekiel passage and the James passage. This is just something I do to remind myself that after I finish reading that passage that there's commentary in the app to go back and read. So I'm just going to draw a little line here. I'm just showing you guys literally all the little details of what I do. And next, I'm just going to open up my Bible and start reading through these passages. Um, and I'll just say a quick prayer in my head, generally saying, God, help me to just understand what you're saying through this passage. Reveal yourself to me through it. It's nothing elaborate, but just inviting the Holy Spirit in to speak to me as I read God's word. So that's what I'm going to start doing. So it usually takes me a little while to read through all of that unless I'm rushing, which is just never good because as you can see, there's around three chapters, two in the Old Testament, just a couple verses in Psalms and Proverbs, and then one in the New Testament. And so it should take me a while to read through it. Obviously, some mornings are more rushed, but um, the next part of my routine is really where it gets crucial and it's something that i try to remember and is also my biggest encouragement to you as you're reading your bible and that is to really just try to engage with the text so there are some days where i write out these references that i'm reading through and then nothing happens in this note section because i am reading through it more quickly and i don't really allow myself the time to stop and dig into and think about what's being said or ask questions and so my biggest advice to you is to pay attention if you have questions that come up as you're reading through it or if maybe there's a word that stands out to you that you don't know the meaning of and look it up or if there's something you read through in the commentary that you think is interesting write it down just do anything you can to engage with what you're reading even if that's just as simple as writing out a verse you read even if you don't feel like you got anything out of it um, because I think there's really so much power in taking time to slow down and write it out and to engage in that way that you end up noticing more things that come through it and honestly when I don't do this and I just read through and I think oh that was a cool verse but I don't take time to like dig in a little deeper or maybe look up a commentary or even just write it out then those are the days I end up walking away feeling like I didn't really take a lot away from my bible reading time and then without fail when I do take time to do that and again that can just be something as simple as writing out a verse those are always the times that God ends up speaking something more 
more to me through the passage because I really believe that can be the Holy Spirit. Um, those little moments where you just, you know, have a thought of, oh, I wonder what this means or um, I want to look a little bit more into this verse or the times that we're even drawn to a specific verse. And if we give that more attention and spend more time on it, we'll end up most of the time learning something really cool through it or just understanding the context more in a way that really makes the verse come alive. And so, um, again, I don't do this every single day. Some days I do rush through it, but I'm always the one who misses out when I do that. And so, um, I'm going to pick this verse right here verse five to write out because it's talking about if you lack wisdom ask god who gives generously to all and i feel like i'm in need of some wisdom right now for decision making and so i'm going to write out verses five and six and then um write out some things that the commentary was saying about that um also i've got a lot of notes here in james because i did do a bible study series on the book of james so check that out if you haven't already but i'm just going to write out these verses here and then i will walk through the different steps of study Next, I want to reread through what the commentary said on this verse because I thought it was really interesting when I was reading through it the first time. It says, Prayer must be offered with confident trust in a sovereign God, with no doubting. This refers to having one's thinking divided within himself, not merely because of mental indecision, but an inner moral conflict or distrust in God. The person who doubts God's ability or willingness to provide this wisdom is like the billowing restless sea moving back and forth with its endless tides, never able to settle. So first of all, I find it encouraging that this passage isn't necessarily condemning internal indecision because it's where I've been at a little bit, um, why I need wisdom in the first place. But it is saying not to doubt in the sense of not distrusting that God is going to provide that wisdom when we ask for it. Because this verse is literally saying, if you lack wisdom, ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. Anytime you see that word will in scripture, that designates a promise of God, that God is promising and saying, if you need wisdom, ask me and I will give it to you without finding reproach. But then it says in verse six, ask with faith, don't doubt that a going to give it to you because if you doubt then you're like a wave of the sea that is tossed to and fro so our indecision or our need for wisdom isn't an issue but rather doubting that god is going to give it to us when we ask that is what james is challenging here in this passage so i'm just going to copy some of those notes from the commentary here into the observation section of my little journal thing so i'm going to show you that Next, what I like to do sometimes is look up some key words from the verse. And so for this verse, I want to look up a couple actually. Wisdom, generously, reproach, and then doubting or doubt because those are all really key words that have a big impact on what the verse is saying. And I know what all those words mean, but I think sometimes it's especially helpful to look up the definitions of words that you are familiar with because looking up the definition can provide just more nuance or richness to what it's actually saying. And so that is what I'm gonna do. Okay, so here's what I wrote down for the wisdom definition. It's the quality of having experience, knowledge, or good judgment, and then applying this to sound actions or decisions. And so this is what we need, or at least what I need, and this is what the verse is saying that God will give to us. Okay, for generously, I wrote, in a way that shows readiness to give more of something, more than is necessary or expected. I kind of messed up on the is there, that's why it looks funky. But, so it's talking about that God is going to give us wisdom when we ask, and it says that he gives generously to all without reproach. And so he gives, not only does he give us wisdom, but he gives more than what is necessary or expected.
So for their approach definition, I wrote in such a way as to express disapproval. My handwriting is just not cute today, guys. Um, disapproval or disappointment. And so remember in context, it's saying if you lack wisdom, ask God who gives generously. He gives more than what we need to all without reproach. So he is not disapproving of us or disappointed in us for lacking wisdom or for not knowing the right decision to make or for needing wisdom. He is not judging us, yet he is readily willing to give it to us. So the definition of doubt there was a feeling of uncertainty or a lack of conviction. And again, this is doubt referring to doubt that God will give us wisdom when we ask him for that. And so as you can see, I kind of took up a lot of the application space with my observations, but I'm just gonna try to sort of summarize that in application and then also write out a prayer and really just pray and ask God to help me to not doubt that he wants to give me that wisdom and to ask him to help me to see where he's giving me that in my life as I'm asking him for it. I figured I'd show you my little summary statement before I fill this part out, um, but I put that God wants to give me wisdom and wants me to believe that he will give it to me when I ask. And so, like I said before, I'm just gonna write out a prayer in response to what I read here in this passage. And then this journal also gives you like a little memory verse to work on each week. And so I'm just gonna write that out and then write some things I'm thankful for today. So once I finish my Bible reading, I will try to spend some time in prayer. And this is really an area I'm trying to grow in. And so I shared some of the things I've been doing to try to grow in that in my how to pray video. Um, but one of the things I shared there was that sometimes I will set an alarm for like 10 minutes and just try to pray throughout that time until the alarm goes off. And if I get distracted, that's okay. Just bring my thoughts back. Um, but the timer I found really helps because then I'm not just thinking about like, all the things I have to do after I finish that time. It's like, okay, I'm locked into this time. I don't have to worry about any of that until the alarm goes off. And so that's what I'm gonna do today. But if you want some more ideas on the other things I've been doing, definitely check out that video. Um, but that's what we're doing today. Let's just set this little timer. And then the last thing I do is actually a new part of my routine that I want to share with you guys. Um, it's a new prayer journal I got actually after I made that prayer video and I have just been loving it. I think it's such a cool concept, so let me show you. So here it is. This is the One Thing I Ask five-year prayer journal from Hosanna Revival. This was the box that it came in that you saw earlier in the video. Um, but I saw them announce this product and literally bought it right away because I just think it's so cool. Let me show it to you. Let's find the date that we're at. So basically how it works is it's got about, I think five to seven lines for each day. And so you can write out abbreviated versions of prayers that you are praying that day. But as you can see, for example, today is November 20th. There are five different years for this day. So today I'm gonna write in 20 to make it 2020. And then I will just take of the different things that I'm praying for today, um, sort of the most pressing things of things that I'm either thanking God for or asking him for. And I'll write them down in little bullet points here. Um, but then as I continue going throughout this journal, next year I'll circle back around to this same page. I'll write in 2021 and I will write out things that I'm praying for a year from now on that day. And then of course the same thing for 2022, 23, 24. And it'll just be really cool because as I am writing prayers on this same day, three, four years from now, I'll be able to look back on things I was praying for a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and just see how God has answered in those things, moved in those things, see what things I'm thanking him for today versus five years from now on this same day. And so I just thought this was a really cool concept for a prayer journal. I love that it captures one of the benefits of journaling your prayers and that you can look back and see things that you were praying for, but that it doesn't necessarily have to be super long form content because as much as I do love journaling my prayers, it's just not something realistically I do in super long form every single day. And so this is sort of a cool in between and I love it. And so this will be linked down below along with all the other tools I used in this video if you want to check those out.
So that is my Bible reading routine from start to finish. It usually takes around 45 minutes, I would say, but I do try to set aside an hour just because sometimes it can go longer or sometimes it takes a while to fight past the distraction and really settle into it. And so I try to give myself that little buffer time. I am getting hungry, so I'm gonna go make some breakfast really quick. But after that, I want to just share some encouragement before we sign off. So I'll be right back. This is my breakfast. Lately, I've been doing two scrambled eggs with avocado and then a boatload of that Trader Joe's Verde salsa because it is so good. And then I also have some blueberries. The last thing I wanted to say is that if you are dealing with a lot of distraction in your Bible reading or just your time with God lately, one, I'm right there with you. I feel like it has been so hard for me to focus lately just in reading my Bible. Don't beat yourself up if that's you. Just do your best to keep showing up and faithfully reading his word every day, even if it doesn't feel like it's this perfect quiet time. And then also if it's been forever since you've even cracked open your Bible and you are just feeling guilty about that, know that God is not sitting there disapproving of you for being being a bad Christian. He simply misses you. And all throughout the Bible, what we see is the heart of a God who in every moment is eager to welcome you back and just wants to spend time with you. And so don't let guilt keep you from opening it. He waits. He wants to spend time with you today. Open up his word, even if you feel like you have no idea where to start, and he will meet you there. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. His heart is for you. He loves you and he wants to spend time with you. And so I hope you found this video helpful and encouraging. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and then also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm going to go jump into work for the day now, so I will see you in my next video. Bye!